archive is fun. Doing view and geometry. I went through and revised some of my geometry lessons so it was less mind numbing. So hopefully that's a positive. That let to say hi in Mandarin means hi with Mandarin. Clever, right? Clever and witty. Love it. All right. Last time we played around with units of measurement. Uh, so when it comes to units, a uh, unit is any measurement there is one of, so it's like a little unit type sort of thing. Um, it's a type of thing. So a unit is like a foot, a yard, a gallon. Um, when you have different sets of units for different measurements, when you have a bunch of different lengths and a bunch of capacities and a bunch of weights, you put those together and you say, okay, now it's a now it's a system. So we have a couple of systems. We have the American system, which goes by a bunch of different names. And I hate that and it's annoying. Um, sometimes it's US customary system, sometimes it's standard system. I went Googling to try to find an uh, like a end all be all, this will do as a name sort of name type thing. And I couldn't. There's there is no consensus. Um and there's a metric system, which seems like it was planned out. Um, you have one system that clearly was not planned out and one system that was. How many feet are in a mile? 5,280, of course. But why wouldn't it be? Where did they get that number? I don't know. So the main thing we covered on doing those was unit conversions. So converting between types of units, you take advantage of the rule that you can multiply anything by one, whether it's an ugly looking one or not. So if you look at the multiplication down there, 60 seconds is one minute. So since the top and bottom are equal, despite the fact they're different units, um, you're still multiplying a thing by one. So you haven't actually changed what it is you're looking at. You're just kind of changing the perspective of it. <laughs> So what you do to is you look at look at what you have right now and you say, okay, I'm going from minutes to seconds. So I want to cancel out minutes. I want to add seconds. So you add a unit conversion for minutes to seconds. And you make sure that the minutes is on the opposite side of the fraction from where it is now. That way the units cancel. Because they cancel the same way that factors would, that variables would, the units could cancel out that way. So those cancel off and you just have seconds left and whatever the numbers multiply out to, that's your answer. So the main thing is keeping the units straight. So math, worry about it later, multiply straight across. I think I'll learn how to use the volume over there. Okay, so. Yep, still hate that example. Okay. Then we had get straight up from that. All right. So then we had the American system of measurement. So with length, we had feet, yards, inches, miles. Um, weight was pounds, ounces, tons. Capacity was cups, fluid ounces, pints, quarts, and gallons. Yeah. And generally, I'm not stressing memorizing any of this because, like I said last time, you know, you sit down to take a test. For instance, if it's the high set and you're doing it on paper or something, they hand you this. You get all of your units right there. If you're doing it online, anything that is relevant is going to be given to you. You pretty much just got to know how to work with it. As long as you understand what it is you're doing, that's pretty much all you're really going to worry about. Realistically, that's actually kind of kind of a good example of real world math. Real world math, you're not going to walk around and be like, I'm memorizing formulas. 
it's it's just problem solving and logic. You have a problem, something's in one unit, you gotta get to another, cool. You pull out a chart that tells you how much of one is uh, one thing is equal to another thing, and you convert them. It's a little more realistic, it's a little more likely to happen. But for the most part, that's kind of how you apply math in the real world. You look it up and you figure it out with what you look at. I have that same slide twice. Bye. We also had the metric system. Metric was a little different. Um, length was in meters, mass was in grams, and capacity was in liters. And then it had a, as a system for units smaller than one. Oh my God, I'm making that worse. Units smaller than one have Latin prefixes, so things in decimal, things in fractions. Um, deci means 10, centi means 100, milli means 1,000, and units larger than one have Greek prefixes, so deca means 10, hecto means 100, kilo means 1,000. Realistically, you're probably only going to use like half of those. Um, when was the last time you played with decameters or hectoliters? You don't, right? So you only have a couple of different options that you'll actually use. Word problems. And they're all, they all have Kevin Bacon in them for no good reason. Kevin Bacon is organizing a charity run to raise funds for a cause he cares deeply about. You know, fill in the blanks for that. You know, you might say uh, childhood cancer. You might say uh, uh, killing kittens. Maybe he's very big on killing kittens, you know. Uh, so it says the plan route for the run is 10 kilometers long. If he wants to know how many meters participants will need to cover, how many meters is the entire route? So we got 10 kilometers. And we're converting that into meters. So a kilometer, that's a large, that's a large unit, right? Um, you'll see kilometers on mileage gauges on your on your car, right? So obviously that's one of the larger units it's actually a kilometer is a thousand meters so if i needed to convert this from kilometers to meters i could put i need to make sure that my kilometers is going to be down here on the opposite side of that fraction so the meters would be up here and then from there i just need to make sure that i have the right numbers in place one kilometer is a thousand meters. You make sure this is accurate. The main thing is the units to start off with and then fill in the numbers. That's how I've always done it. That helps keep things straight because the main thing is making sure things cancel here. So speaking of, the units cancel and you get 10 times a thousand. Believe it or not, that is 10,000. We have 10,000 meters, that's how many. Isn't that exciting? I know you're all excited. How many of you are horribly tired right now? That is three out of four, all right. That'll do. <laughs> Bacon family is remodeling their living room and it measures 15 feet by 20 feet. They want to know the area of square yards to buy carpet. One square yard is equal to nine square feet. How many square yards of carpet should they buy? Yeah, because 
as you often do, you buy things in square yards. Does that make sense, right? The main thing that we have 15 feet by 20 feet. Square yards. Now, there's multiple ways to do this. Now, it does tell us that one square yard is nine square feet. Now this one, there's actually a pretty decent trick to it, and I'll show you in a second. But first of all, if I know that I'm converting to square yards and it gives me something in square feet, chances are I'm going to get our square feet, right? So I would probably do the multiplication, the width and the length of the room. If you multiply them together, it gives you the area of this. Something we're going to do in a you know a couple more slides. So you'd actually be able to get the area of the room by multiplying. We end up with three hundred square feet. Well, if I if I have three hundred square feet. I'm going to use this to convert. I would have square feet down here, to cancel out, and I'd have to have square yards up here. I can also write that as yard square. So one square yard was nine square feet. We do our multiplication across because now our units are right. End up with 300 over nine square yards, which is about 33.3 square yards. And that'll work. It's a good way to do it. Now, granted, getting the square footage for a room is pretty basic, but let's say you didn't have a clue how to do that and you knew you needed to get everything into yards. Another way to have done this would have been to completely ignore this conversion that you were given right there and say, oh, well, you know, one yard is three feet. And that would actually cancel out one of these. And then you could do it again. One yard, three feet. Now cancel out the other one. And so you would get the same multiplication happening. You would still end up with 300 on top and nine on the bottom, the same units. But by doing that, I'd be a little cheap about it. I could even, I could even reduce if I wanted to. That three goes into itself once. And 15 five times, that would now be 100 over three. You do that, that works. Yeah, you got options. Yeah, that's that. Are we happy about this? No, everyone seems so happy today. Don't worry. Only a couple more classes left. Number three. Number three says Kevin Bacon is training for an action packed role in an upcoming movie. Let's say it's a uh, John Wick prequel where he plays a teenage John Wick because that sounds fun. Um, just in a bad long black wig. Yeah. yeah. I think he's older than Keanu. I don't know. 
That'd be even fun. Um, so it says you set, set a goal to run 10 kilometers every day for a month. If he succeeds, how many miles will he have run in total? So let's make the assumption that we got 30 days in this month. Nice round number, right? 30 days times 10 kilometers. We got 300 kilometers. Now, the main thing here is that we're going from that number to miles. How the hell we do that? Well, like I said, you're usually given a formula sheet. And in this case, they give you one mile is about 1.6 kilometers. It's kind of funny because this this is such a nicer unit conversion chart than I ever had. I was taking classes. Literally, the only thing to convert between length was inch. So you'd have to go from kilometers all the way down to centimeters, convert over to inches, and then go from inches back up to miles. Yeah. So it would take a while. But this is, this is a nice number right there. That gives us something neat. We can actually work with that. Don't die. Don't get bad for you. I think. <laughs> Not a crappy die. Who yelled that at work today? Was walking, walking past the donor floor and somebody's machine alarm. And I looked over and I was like, oh my God, he died. Oh no, he's still alive. Okay, let's see what, what's going on with this thing. I don't know how I'm still employed on the place. I had one guy who was like, oh yeah, this girl's really into me and she's waiting into the car and yeah, I'm just interested in her as friends. And we're like, you better not be leading her on. If you're leading her on, I will take this needle. I'll go straight through your arm. I will find your elbow from the other side. <laughs> To be fair, if we were being audited at that point, I would probably be straight up sued by my workplace. You gotta have fun with where you work. All right, so we're gonna convert 300 kilometers over to miles. We're gonna use this thing that came straight off of the high set conversions. So kilometers is going to have to cancel out. So it'll go on the other side on the bottom there. The miles will be on top. And we have one mile. It's 1.6 kilometers. So we end up with 300 divided by 1.6. Mr. Phone that's pretending to be an expensive Mr. Calculator today and we get 187.5. It's a pretty decent uh, pretty decent amount of miles to run. I couldn't do that. I couldn't do a tenth of that. Mm -hmm. Often tell my girlfriend I am a uh, nice way to put it is a useless little bitch. Usually that has to do with things I just don't want to do, but we can also say it's the things I can't do as well. Nope, wrong tab. There we go. All right. Blah, 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 blah. I feel good about unit conversion. How about you guys? Good? Okay. Let's play with geometry. You guys like geometry? Cool. Me too. 
just like semi teacher could just go into a classroom the entire time I'll just act like a kindergarten teacher and have like a PBS voice all time. All right, children, here we go. Mm -hmm. Just don't break the act and go with the last day. All right. <laughs> Defining the 2D space. We get to play with geometry, but before we get into actual like geometric stuff, we gotta we gotta know what we're talking about. So the very basics of geometry are a point, a line, and a plane. A point is just a name of a location or a designation. Um, it doesn't have any size. It's represented by a dot, but it's not as big as a dot. It's just like the dot is just a marker for, yeah, about here. A line is a straight path made up of an infinite number of points. It has no thickness and extends in both directions indefinitely. So kind of like a point, a line doesn't actually, you know, it's like being able to imagine a line from the edge of one whiteboard to the other whiteboard. It's imaginary, but that's a line, right? We we just draw a straight line on a paper to represent our view. And then you have a plane. Plane is a flat surface with no thickness and extends forever in each direction. For example, when we graph lines, we use a two-dimensional coordinate plane. When you do the little you know, two axes, you got the X and the Y, and you do little check marks along them. That is a plane, and it's a coordinate plane in that we are just kind of giving ourselves perspective of where we are. Oh, man. Good stuff. Wait till you get to the point of uh, in college algebra. Maybe it's in trig vectors. Vectors have direction and length, but not a position. So we also have definitions of shapes of lines. So we get a line segment. It's a part of a line that consists of two endpoints and all the points between them. So a line segment is a segment of a line. What a surprise. An endpoint is the point at each end of a line segment or one end of a ray. It's the point on the end. It's an endpoint. A ray is a part of a line with one endpoint and extending forever in one direction. And then an angle is two rays sharing a common endpoint. Yay. Now, how often are you going to have to be able to bust out vocab for this? He's got to know what it is you're working with. That's that's what this is all here for. Just to be able to say, okay, I know what I'm talking about. That's that. There's an angle between two lines. Cool. I know what we're talking about. So from there, we go into a bunch of stuff on actual angles. So angles are formed when two rays are extended from a central point. That point we usually call the vertex. The angles are usually denoted by a little symbol that looks like an angle. Look at that. It's called an angle symbol. Isn't that impressive? And they can be referred to by their vertex, the three points comprising it, or a given name or number. So there are four different possibilities to name this triangle right here. And I'm sure if I stare at it long enough, I could potentially think of more. So looking at this angle right here, it has a one inside of it showing that its angle is angle number one. So you could just call it angle one. Otherwise, at point B, it only has one angle coming off from that area. So you could say, okay, it's angle B because there's no other angles. But if there was another ray shooting off to the left and it was like going off towards a point D or something, 
then you wouldn't be able to do that because you'd have more than one angle from a point. You can also call it by the three points surrounding it. So if I had another line and I couldn't call it angle B, I could say it was angle A, B, C because it's kind of wrapping around that direction or the other direction CBA, just to say, okay, it's this one. So you'll see those bounce around, um, really just depends on what problem it is you're working with. But now yeah, usually you're not gonna see things written as angle one very often, but you might have something uh, like a variable, like this might be angle X or angle Y. Because if it gave us like, oh, this is 23 degrees, I'm not going to call it angle 23 degrees. You just say that angle is 23 degrees. So you got three names for angles depending on their measurements acute, right, and obtuse. And acute angles are between 0 and 90. So they're kind of the small ones. Right angles are 90 degrees, so they're kind of like at a perfect right angle from each other. And obtuse angles are between 90 and 180, so they're the wide ones. Now, it doesn't much matter if you try to memorize the 0, 90, 180 thing there, because you'll be able to look at them and say, oh yeah, that one's big, so it's obtuse. Oh, that one's small, that one's acute. And the reason that it stops at 180, because 180 is when it kind of wraps around to a flat line and past 180 degrees, you just have an obtuse angle in the other direction. So you're not even, you're not even really worried about it at that point. All right, more vocab, you excited? Now, the next two are good to commit to memory because, honestly, I keep forgetting them. I forget one one versus the other all the time. Drives me nuts. So we have supplementary angles and complementary angles. So supplementary angles are two angles that add up to 180 degrees. So basically, you put the two angles together to make a straight line. Linear pairs of angles are always supplementary, but supplementary angles don't have to be adjacent. Yeah, that's one thing. Supplementary angles don't have to be adjacent, so they don't have to be next to each other. If one of them is, well, for these eggs and for these guys, one of them is 70 degrees, and then you have some angle like, you know, three feet away and it's 110 degrees, just because they fit together to 180 degrees, that makes them supplementary angles to each other. So supplementary, 180 degrees. Complementary, these two actually add up to 90 degrees. So exact same thing, exact same scenario. You have two angles that add up to 90 degrees. Congratulations, they're complementary. Isn't that fun? No, you guys are having so much fun. We have a couple of examples that I very quickly made up earlier today and completely stole this image from God knows where, but literally just did an image search. So who knows who I ripped off this time. So it says in the figure to the right, angle AOD, that would be the one starting with A, going to O, and then going to B. And angle DOB, so DOB, are supplementary. Well, yeah, that makes sense. This one and this one add up to a straight line. If angle AOD measures X plus 20, 
and angle DOB measures X minus 10, what are their measures? Basically, you have that going on. Then we have some points. Pretty sure this is O for origin, but whatever. There's D. Where's C? I don't know. They just kind of dropped it. So we got this going on. And it says they are supplementary. They're supplementary if they add to 180 degrees. So how can I solve this? Well, all you can really do is try to put together an equation that matches what you know and see if it'll work out. And what I know is this angle plus this angle are going to add up to 180. So we can actually <laughs> rate up Adam to get. I could have put parentheses around them, but I didn't mainly because the plus isn't really going to do anything to that. The main reason those parentheses are on there are to say this whole thing is the degree measure. Yeah, so we have this thing. At this point, we'll just add together everything on the left. We have an x plus another x, so we got two of them. Two x plus 20, minus 10, plus 10, okay. equals 180. <laughs> then I'm going to subtract 10 from both sides. I get 2x equal to 170. Divide off that 2. X gives us 85. But I am not done. Because what we know is that angle AOD with X plus 20, angle EOB with X minus 10. I don't care what X is, I care about the angles on it. So you have to take that and plug it back in here. So for this one, it would be 85 plus 20. So 105 degrees, and this one would be 85 minus 10, so 75 degrees. Those would be what we're after. So the X was just part of it. We got to make sure that we go back and make sure we're answering the question completely. Number two isn't relating to that angle. Number two just says if angle A measures 23 degrees, okay. what is its supplementary angle or complementary angle? Mm -hmm. So I don't, we don't have a name for the complementary angle, but let's say it was angle B, just because, you know, that makes sense. And we know that angle A 
90, that is too loud for me to think straight. This isn't going to help at all. I know. Huh. Well, no. <laughs> She's, she stopped talking for a second. That's what happened there. I was like, oh, is it different in this room as opposed to that one? No. No. And yes, I'm aware of how unhealthy I am. We got, we got Coke. We got Mountain Dew. I'm going to die. That's great. I have some water once a month or so. Like all the sugar. It's like what happens when you drink nothing but soda. You just get fat. <laughs> no. These guys both add up to 90 degrees. They are complements. We know that angle A is 23. I'm just going to leave this in our equation as a variable. That's perfectly fine. We could solve for that thing, right? So all I got to do is subtract 23 from both sides. So you get angle B is equal to 67. 67 degrees. You can always do that. To find a complementary angle, you can subtract. 90, uh, whatever it is from 90. Uh, to find a supplementary angle, you can subtract whatever it is from 180. It'll work. So that's how you found the answer to that question. The first one? The one this one? Yeah. Kind of. I said that the first one, these two angles added up to 180 because they were supplementary. And the second one, they add up to 90 because they're complementary. But that's the same sort of structure. You know, okay, they add up to 180, cool. Add them together equals 180. You know, they add up to 90, cool. Add them together equals 90. So you just put it together however it actually makes sense. Say, oh yeah, this and this combined are this number. There we go. And you just work it out from there. In this case, you know, we didn't have anything. We didn't have what our variable was, but we could put that together and solve for it. Likewise, down here, A and B were different things, but once I actually threw something in here for A, then I had just one thing I could solve for. Good stuff. I'm waiting for the awkward knock at the door because it's going to be locked. Um, a few times I've come up and the door was locked and I jiggled the handle and I was like, what the hell? Why is my classroom locked? And then a student opened the door for me and I was like, why are you in here? And I'm not. That was the first day. Well, it's happened more than once. <laughs> yeah, well, the closed door didn't help anyway. So. <sighs> Okay, hey, good stuff. We are happy with this. We are going to move on from angles into shapes.
guys all see that stupid it goes in the square hole video. Okay, one out of three. Yeah, right. that'll do. That makes you the nerd now. All right. So, geometry. So, geometry is the study of various geometric figures, their properties, and their relationships. So, it explores everything related to that. Points, lines, angles, curves, surfaces, solids, blah, 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 all the stuff. Anything that has a shape, anything that has a direction, there we go. So, primary goal of geometry is to understand and analyze the characteristics and measurements of objects. So we're going to primarily deal with polygons, which are shapes enclosed by line segments. So things with flat edges also have circles. The second you start getting into weird things that are that have like a little wobble to them, suddenly you need calculus. Literally anything more complicated than a perfect shape requires calculus. Love it. So, understanding geometry and its related concepts such as perimeter, area, mass, and volume is crucial in various practical applications ranging from construction and architecture to engineering and scientific fields. Good stuff. Let's start off with perimeter and area. So perimeter is the length of the boundary or outer edge of a two-dimensional figure. So distance around it. It's only the two of you now. Huh? Yeah, everybody's stuff is still here. They'll be back eventually. Probably. Uh, the perimeter is found by adding up the lengths of all the sides of the figure. Some of them have formulas, some of them don't. The formula for the perimeter of a rectangle is really the only polygon formula you're ever going to have. Otherwise, it's literally just add up all the sides. Area is the measure of the space enclosed within a two-dimensional shape. It measures the amount of surface covered by the shape. So there is calculated differently every, on every different shape. It can be annoying. Sometimes it's, it's not bad. You have a square, cool. Multiply the side by itself. Second, you get a triangle, like cool. Multiply the base times the height and chop it in half. And you get into weird things like, you know, trapezoids and all that stuff. And it's good to have fun with it. Right. Area is typically expressed in square units such as square centimeters or square meters. So you're playing around with a word problem that talks about something in square meters or square whatever your units are, you're dealing with area. things I found funny about this. One, the guy does have a picture of his toilet over his toilet. The second is it's spelled toilet foliate. It looks like a picture of a toilet also. Yep. His toilet's all the way down. The rectangles. Rectangle is a four sided shape, but you didn't know that. It's got four sides. Opposite sides that are parallel and equal in length. All angles in a rectangle are right angles, 90 degrees. A square is a type of rectangle where all four sides are equal in length. So all squares are rectangles, but not all rectangles are squares. So perimeter of a rectangle 
given by this silly little formula. It actually does come in handy pretty regularly. So the perimeter of a rectangle is found by adding the lengths of all of its sides. The rectangle, opposite sides are equal to length. So the formula to calculate the perimeter is P equals 2L plus 2W. So twice the length and twice the width. And the only reason you can get away with that on a rectangle is because the opposite sides are equal to each other. So if you have a length and a width, cool, you got two of each of those. So if you have a rectangle with a length of six and a width of four, we'll double the length, double the width, and add them together. My God, I'm tired. Okay. Trying to take a nap between jobs today. <laughs> Fell asleep. Maybe five to seven minutes afterwards, after I fall asleep for my 30 minute nap, my cat starts puking everywhere. At least five times. That was my five minute nap today. Needed everything. One, sorry, folks, I have it. Area. So rectangles have area calculated by area is equal to length times width. So you just multiply them together, right? It's not bad. How many words I, I managed to pull out or multiply the two measures together? It's great. You got uh, it's feet. eight feet by five feet. You multiply them together. Eight times five is 40. Feet times feet is feet squared because the units, while they were canceling in our last areas, area of expertise there, um, units were canceling there. Here, when you multiply them together, they're gonna they're gonna turn into squares like uh, like variables would. X times X, X squared. Feet times feet, feet squared. Feet, the, the math follows with the units just as much as it does with the numbers. Okay. Examples. Kevin Bacon's rectangular garden measures eight meters by five meters. What is the total distance needed to enclose the garden with a fence? That would be perimeter, right? We're we're enclosing this. You have some shape rectangle. A for rectangle. Look at that rectangle. Isn't that beautiful? That's right. It is. There it is. It's a beautiful garden. Look at that garden. Let's find the perimeter and let, you know what? Let's find the area too while we're at it. Why not? So the perimeter formula P equals 2L plus 2W. If you ever forget it, well, perimeter is just adding up all the sides. So you can literally just go 5 plus 8 plus 5 plus 8. Okay. Otherwise, is plug in what you know into the formula. Perimeter is two, 2 times 8 plus 2 times 5. You might say, hey, if I know it's as easy as just adding up all the sides, why don't I do that instead of using the formula? When things get more complicated later down the line, the formula comes in very handy. Being able to plug something into this is great. And someday, it's not going to be as easy as an eight. 
Someday it's going to be some complex pile of garbage. <laughs> so multiply them out. We get 26. Now this is meters plus meters plus meters plus meters. So guess what? It's in meters. So that's the perimeter of this uh, what is it, a garden. We'll call it whatever. Yeah. Sure. Where, where Kevin Bacon uh, buries his victims, plants flowers over them so he can, you know, suspicious when he's out gardening, you know. Is there a movie like with Johnny Depp where he has a he like? That is in fact the very end of the movie. Yeah. <laughs> That's so fucked up. <laughs> The thing that's more screwed up is that the corn was, in fact, seeping the nutrients out of the box. Yeah. I can't imagine people would make a great fertilizer, but hey, I don't know. I've never really, never really tried to fertilize the people. Let's also find the area. This for funsies. Area is length times width, so we're just going to multiply the two together. You can write it however you feel like it. You can write the numbers of the multiplication symbol. I'm personally going to use parentheses. I usually do that when I'm plugging things into formulas because if they're more complicated, if there's stuff outside of those variables that's happening, then I know that I haven't broken anything. That's the only reason I'm doing it. So they multiply together, we get 40. Now, in this case, it's meters times meters. So meters times meters gives us meters squared. So if you're doing it in meters, it's always going to be meters squared? Because you're multiplying meters times meters. So they, the units take the math the same way that the numbers do. So like with the measurement, when we were canceling out units, here they're kind of stacking up. Meters times meters, meters squared. Inches times inches, inches squared. Inches times yards gives you inch yards, which is technically still correct, but it's also horrifying and it shouldn't exist. You can absolutely make up really, really jank units. Okay, let's see if any of these problems don't suck. They are all roughly the same idea. Are we, are we comfortable with doing rectangles after one example problem? Yeah, figured that's, out of all the shapes, that's the one we can do, right? World ends. I can add up to. Uh, I can add up all the sides of a rectangle. I literally was like, "How do I fit Kevin Bacon into this last one?" Because it didn't have anything to do with actual like like physical things, and I just whatever Kevin Bacon. I'm an adult. Okay, so let's let's run head first into triangles. I think there's. Yeah, it's trapped in a different stuff on triangles. So with triangles, there's a bunch of different names for a lot of these. I'm not going to lie. I usually have to look them up. Um, so triangles are three-sided shapes, and they come in different types. Most basic classification is based on their side lengths. How we work with these shapes is all roughly the same, that same but understanding them conceptually can come with you. So we got four types of triangles. Now, for the most part, we usually end up playing with right triangles. It's the most applicable for doing a lot of different things. Um, I can, you know, just very randomly find right triangles in the world all over the place. Because if you got two, two angle, uh, two sides of something coming off of each other, you can kind of make a right triangle out of everything. So equilateral triangles exist. 
equilateral triangle has three equal sides and three equal angles, each measuring 60 degrees. Imagine a triangle where all sides and angles are the same, like a perfectly balanced pyramid. Then you have isosceles triangle. And isosceles, so equilateral is three equal sides. Isosceles is two equal sides. Two equal sides, two equal angles. Then you just got another one hanging out. The third side and angle may be different. So visualize a triangle with two sides and the angles that are the same, like a mountain with two equal slopes. The mountain with two equal slopes. Imagine that they're very steep and the guy is trying to ski off them and he just falls. You're welcome. We also have scaling triangles. Scaling is basically uh, nothing. Nothing is equal. All the sides are different. All the angles are different. And then right triangle, it's called a right triangle because it has a right angle. The right triangle has one 90 degree angle. Um, the side opposite the right angle is referred to as the hypotenuse. Other sides, often referred to as just the legs of the triangle. Um, and that's pretty much it with those. Um, another thing that I'm pretty sure I've neglected to write down is that all of the internal angles of a triangle always add up to 180 degrees. So, the interesting thing that that applies to with right triangles is that if one angle is 90 already, that means the other two add up to 90. So, the other two angles in a right triangle are always complementary angles. So, if you get one, you're like, oh, cool, my right triangle has, a, you know, a 30 degree angle down here. Oh, cool, then that means the other one's got to be 60. Because they add up to 90 every time. So, like most polygons, triangles don't have a magical formula for their perimeter. If you're doing the perimeter for a triangle, you just add up all the sides. You can make up a formula. You can just be like, oh yeah, perimeter is side one plus side two plus side three. Um, realistically, when you would do that would be if you're doing like a word problem, you're given two sides, you're trying to find the third side, and you know how how long the perimeter is. So it says here to consider a triangle with side lengths of five, seven, and nine. Find this perimeter, you add them all up. Get 24. So the area of a triangle, not quite as quick. So the area of a triangle is a measure of the region it occupies within its boundaries. The formula to calculate the area of a triangle is typically given as half the product of the base and the height. So you multiply the base and the height together and you chop it in half. Now, the nice thing is when you're working with right triangles for these, because you have the base and you have a perfect height. But the annoying thing is that a lot of those other ones, when you have like an isosceles triangle, um, don't have an exact height for it. You might have a side, but that's not the height of a triangle. The height always goes straight down to the base from the highest point. So the problem there is that you usually end up having to make right triangles inside of those triangles and turn it into a mess. Sometimes it's a mess, sometimes it's not. Oh my God, we have all two different problems. This always makes me laugh. These are four separate movies. The Rock in a tan shirt. What's he doing? Who knows, but I bet he's in the jungle. Do you bounce berries off that first one on the top left? Huh? Bounce the berries off his chest. I don't remember. Well, 
One of them, he had the dude with them up from American Pie running around with them in a forest. Then you had Jumanji, had nothing to do with the old Jumanji, but whatever. Uh, I don't even know what else he's done in the jungle. You ever notice he can't act? He's always the same guy. He's, he's, he's just the rock in everything. He doesn't actually try to act. He has a clause in his contract that says he'll never lose a fight. Really? Yeah, he will not take a movie if it takes that uh, means his uh, character loses a fight. Well, that's why Black Adam and the Shazam stuff like him took off. Yeah, because they decided to give him a movie and he's the bad guy, which is stupid. Don't get me wrong; it's an interesting character, but they could never actually put him in to his own universe because he would have to lose the fight. Uh, that's strange. Okay. So an equilateral triangle has a perimeter of 36 units. Find its side length and area. I'm actually going to change that to just find its side length. Thing. The only thing is these problems won't work because we can't find the area. Yeah, it'll work. That's a problem. Oh, yeah. These problems got rigid when I was playing around with seeing if AI could write uh, write math problems, and the answer was no. So it says an equilateral triangle has a perimeter of 36 units. Find its side length. The equilateral, which means every side equal, and then the perimeter is 36. So the nice thing is that if all of these sides are equal, in order to find the side, all we have to do is take that 36 and divide it by three. That'll give us each side, right? They're all equal, so just chop it up a little bit. End up with 12, and what was that in? Just says units. So if that's the unit we're working with, we could just go with units. Sometimes you'll see that happen where there it's not a given length or you know any particular type of unit. They just say units. It's just generic placeholder for whatever might matter. Okay, let's see if let's see if number two actually works or if I just threw numbers at it and made an impossible try. It says the area of a right triangle is 30 meters squared. Its height is is it six meters? and find the base. So the formula for the area of a triangle is one half the base times the height, one half BH. 
Now that makes a lot of sense if you look at a right triangle, because in a right triangle, you have that perfect 90 degree angle right there. And when you have a 90 degrees, usually you'll see a little square at the corner. If you ever see like somebody put a circle right here, that means it's not a perfect 90 and you can't assume that. But it makes, this formula makes a lot of sense if you can kind of think of extending out those sides because then it would be a rectangle and you would say, oh, well, this would be a rectangle. What's its area? Um, you know, the length times the width. Okay, what about the diagonal? Uh, half of that. So that's kind of where that sort of falls in. We don't actually need that, but that's that's where the formula is kind of coming from. Now, what do we know here? We know the area and we know the height. So if we have six meters here, what the heck is that? Well, I don't know, but we're calling it B for base. Well, let's roll with it. And just take the two pieces of information we know, throw it at the formula. We have 30 for the area equals one half the base, I don't know what the base is, and the height is six. We'll put that in parentheses. Now, over here on the right, we have three things multiplied together, and it doesn't matter what we multiply together first. So that means I can do the one half and the six together. Half of six is three. And then I can divide off the three. And I get 10. So that means over here, that base is actually 10 meters. How'd you get 10? We had 30 equals one half the base times the height. Multiply the one half and that six. So the one half and six gives us three. And then to solve for the B, we divide off that three. So 30 divided by three is? Good stuff. You guys, like another seven or eight slides and we're gonna call it good. or 10, you know, whatever. They'll go quick, it'll be fine. Circles. You'd think I'd put that, that pizza meme on the triangles, but technically since it's curved at the edge, it's actually a part of a circle. Uh, so circles, a circle is a perfectly round shape in which all points on the edge are equidistant from the center. So same same distance from the center all the way around. It is defined by its radius, which is the distance from the center to any point on the edge, and its diameter, which is twice the length of the radius. Circles are encountered in many real world scenarios, such as wheels, coins, and plates. Yeah, that's right. Plate is a circle. Most of the time. Coming at me with your rectangular plates here. Yeah. Don't want to hear it. So, once we jump into circles, we start playing around with pi. Pi is a mathematical constant that represents the ratio of a circle's circumference to its diameter. So, literally, any circle on the planet, you measure the distance around the edge and divide it by the length across, you will get pi every time. No exception. So usually approximated 3.14 or 3.14159. 
but it actually does go on infinitely without repeating decimals. Pi is widely used in various mathematical and scientific calculations, as well as circles, such as finding circumference into areas and volume. This yesterday, and it just cracked me up. Marvin Gaze, Google said us. What's going on? What's happening, brother? When did you stop loving me? Where are we going? Where am I? So, radius is the distance from the center of circle to any points on its edge. It is half the length of diameter. Realistically, you're going to use radius. If anything ever gives you a diameter, you're going to take that diameter, you're going to chop it in half, and you're going to work with the radius. You want to use the radius. So the circumference is the first thing we have a formula for with circles. Circumference is basically the perimeter of a circle. So it's always given by 2 times pi times the radius. You will usually see that written as 2 pi r. So the example here, find the circumference of a circular garden with a diameter of 10 meters. Okay, half of that is five meters, so that'd be the radius. Two times pi times the radius, be 10 pi. Multiply it in, be at 31.4 ish. And area. The area of a circle is the measure of the region enclosed by its edge can be calculated using the formula, area is equal to pi times radius squared. So pi r squared. So any of those, you're just gonna take the radius, slap it at the formula, throw it at a calculator, call it good. If you end up getting the area and finding the radius, a little tricky. Now, I don't know about you guys, but when I was learning this stuff originally, my brain was swirling with formulas. I had circumference in my head. I had area in my head. I knew I had just plugged in the radius for both of them, and I couldn't keep them straight. And the way I keep it straight is knowing that anytime I have a square unit, I'm playing with area. So if I have radius squared in this one, it has to be area. No way around it. Just think of the units that would be on the, the variables you're working with. Limit of 15 people in the meet. You promise there's no more than 15 people people in the hamburger today. Uh, that would be lower quality hamburger because people have terrible diets compared to people. You know, if I was a cannibal, I think I'd go for the guy who eats cheeseburgers all day. Then the vegan. I don't know. I'm sure I might. I don't know. Maybe, maybe if I ate people, I'd have a different opinion. I don't know. You never know. I made a horrible joke at work today, and one of the donors was like, are you, sure, are you sure you've never worked in a morgue? Like, oh my God, can you imagine the jokes I'd make if I worked in a morgue? <laughs> I have no limit. I have no filter. There is no end to what I would do there. It's crazy when people get caught or get caught doing the work. Yeah, I'm not okay with that. Definitely wouldn't do that. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. <laughs> I'm like, dude, when you do it, like, if you do it, shit like that with only around it, that's, that's so, it's so too much, you know? I would probably, um, prank coworkers by setting them all up around a poker table. I think that's what I would do. You know, just elaborate cards and, you know, what have you. Oh, that's dark. Mm-hmm. I bet you guys could, like... <laughs> 
play the drummer, not drums with some femurs or something. I don't know. Um, all right, I'm done. <laughs> so let's, let's keep going here. Or my sense of humor gets too dark and I get fired immediately. All right. So circle, circles exist. A circle has a radius of five centimeters. Find its circumference. I don't know. I'm still writing stuff down. Oh, okay. <laughs> Maybe. Probably. Uh -huh. This is five centimeters. No, it wouldn't be. So we're looking for the circumference. And circumference is the distance around the circle. So it's like its perimeter. So that's going to be the formula 2 pi r. We're going to take that and we're going to plug in our radius, 5 centimeters. V equals 2 pi times 5. The two and the five can multiply together, so we end up with 10 pi. Um, we end up with 31.4. This is the moment I realized that this was actually one of the ones I used in one example. All right. Oh, whatever. And we always need units. This is circumference. We start with centimeters. We're ending with centimeters. Now for the second one, that one says we have a circle with diameter 12 meters, and we need to find the area. So anytime you're given the diameter, first thing you do, chop it in half and get the radius. Diameter is not as useful for actually working things out. Comes in handy, it's easy to make sense of, but for practical purposes in working with circles on, on paper and math, radius tends to come in handy more. So we get the radius and our formula is A equals pi r squared. One thing I learned when in trigonometry is usually when you start dealing with pi, you end up making this nice little swirl and making it all look nice. And then eventually it always turns into a freaking table. Always. Like, I don't care what this looks like. I know it's pi. Good enough. So we're going to take our radius and throw it at this formula. So we have area is equal to pi times 6 being squared. Well, that gives us... 36 when we square that 6, but it's still being multiplied by pi. Where are you, calculator? Hi, calculator app. How you doing? I haven't used you much today. Okay, so we have 36 pi, 36 pi. Fun thing is that if your calculator is a jerk, you'll hit enter and it'll spit out 36 pi because this particular one is giving you an exact answer. So I have to get an approximate answer, which is 113.097. Now, our units were in meters originally, and we just squared meters. So our units are meters squared. 
Goodbye, I'll miss you. I just want you to know that. Have a good night. I will sleep so well, you have no idea. Speaks. Hmm? Speaks. I, yeah, that was the first time I ever heard about it. Oh. Number three, we are given the circumference is 3.14. And we're asked, what's the radius? So in this case, we're given, we're basically given pi, right? So it's pi to two decimals. So hey, whatever. Let's see what happens. So we have our formula, C equals uh, two pi r. And we know our circumference is 3.14. This is a good way to actually do these types of formulas until you get comfortable with them is say, okay, this is the type of problem I'm dealing with. Write out your formula. Yeah, you might be able to look over at your notes or your papers or something and say, yep, there's my formula and try to use it right away. But if you write it down and then in the next line, substitute in what you know, it kind of kind of clicks better. So at this point, we have the radius is actually our only variable because even though pi is like a weird looking thing, it's still a number. We know it's a number, it's a constant. So I can actually solve for the radius right away by dividing by two pi because pi is just a number. Now, when I go to plug that into my calculator, I have to be very careful about it because if I hit divided by two pi, if I write it that way, my calculator is going to divide that number by two and then multiply that whole thing by pi. So you have to be careful. Usually when I'm dividing by anything more complicated than a number, I just slap it in parentheses and call it good. Some calculators are smart, some calculators are dumb, and you have to feed them the right input. Either way, we get something kind of tiny. And our radius is 0 0.499747. You can tell pretty much anywhere I can round that off to one half, right? Because what's really happening here is that 3.14 is just really, really close to pi, right? So these two things almost cancel out. And if these things almost cancel out, we almost have one over two. So that's why this thing is close to one half, but isn't. If I said C equals pi, then yeah, it'd be one half. Okay. Number four was asking, hey, we have an area. The area is 154. 154 what? Square centimeters. And it's asking for the diameter. Things we know about the diameter, it's twice the radius. Things I know about the area, I have a formula for it. The formula de deals with the radius. If I find the radius, I could just double it and get the diameter. Yay. So there we go. That's what I'm going to work with. So I can plug in the 154 for my A. But the problem is we're going to be solving for that R. Well, I can divide by pi. Now I'll have 154 divided by pi. Oop, no. There we go. Oh, silly me. I almost divided by theta. Which isn't a constant. It's actually a variable. 
So this one right here gives us 49.0197. 49 in case you're at least vaguely curious as to why I don't just have a fancy calculator app and I'm just rocking an emulator of an old calculator because that's the model calculator that got me through all the calculuses, differential equations, and a decade of tutoring. So I know this calculator like the back of my hand. Uh, I used to freak people out because I'd use it for so long that I'd be able to enter things with two hands. Like what? You know things are getting hardcore when he's, when he's two-handing it. Yeah. That's, that's a terrible statement. All right. So, <laughs> You're welcome. So we're solving for R. We have R squared. Well, in order to cancel out a square, we square root both sides. Hey, look, it's that concept coming back to haunt us. How do I get the square, uh, square root of that? Well, I use the calculator, of course. <clears throat> So I throw it at the calculator. And of course, since I'm finding the square root of almost a perfect square, I get almost seven. So our radius is 7.00141. Cool. Now that's the radius, but remember, we're not after a radius, we're after a diameter. Oh my God, how do I find that times two? Oh my God, it's that. Why did that? Rounded that off. All right, whatever. So our diameter would be 14.00282 ish. Oh, got my units. This is centimeters squared, so this would be centimeters. Isn't that fun? Oh, we're so happy. We're so happy that we'll consider doing another page of examples on circles. Do we want to do another page of examples on circles? I don't know about you. I'm kind of checked out and I'm the teacher, so I mean. Yeah, I've been awake too long. Yeah, I just got off a 10 hour shift. You know, I still got it. Yeah, I had to go in at seven. Did I show up at seven? No. But I haven't been fired yet. All right. Shut up. Yeah, I don't. 